in the 1990s, it became very well known that environmental organisations could apply to the Heritage Lottery Fund uh, for money towards brand new projects. So the Conservancy made the first inquiries to the Heritage Lottery back in 1995 and it actually took nine years uh, before the first year of the projects got uh, underway. So what happened is that the lottery helped us and also gave us a grant to employ someone to help put our bid uh, together and that person was Robert Perry. 40 projects were put together all in all and to give it a title um, Robert Perry suggested that we use the title similar to a book that had been published very recently at the time and it's this book here. It's called The Rhythm of the Tide and uh, it's uh, a book of short stories, historical stories based in the harbour by Sir Jeremy Thomas who had been chair of the advisory committee uh, in the early 1990s and our suite of projects became known as Rhythms of the Tide. The bid was finally approved uh, for one and a half million pounds for a range of projects from recreation, uh, the Sultan's Way cycle route, uh, the solar powered boat, to archaeology, to projects looking at um, uh, the migration of green shanks. So a very, very wide ranging group of projects which we then started to deliver over a, a two year period. The 40 projects funded by the HLF were divided into six different themes. Theme number one was habitat enhancement and there were eight projects listed under this and that included planting two and a half kilometres of hedgerow, the removal of some old commercial boats with archaeological uh, support there and also uh, computing of the intertidal vegetation. Under the habitat enhancement uh, projects, it was an opportunity to buy all the equipment that uh, the volunteers uh, needed for the roles that they had very kindly given their time for. Shirley here is a harbour watcher for the Fishbourne Channel and it's a lovely sunny morning in November and here she is carrying out her role, picking up the litter on the shoreline here at Del Quay. The second theme was history and archaeology and one of the eight projects was the renovation of the grain store here on the quay at Del Quay and the theme also included geophys of the Fishbourne and Bosom channels. Geophys was popular on TV at the time as part of the programme Time Team. And another project was the renovation of Oyster Boat Terra uh, in Emsworth and the support of an apprentice during that renovation. Terra was in such a terrible condition, she couldn't be any worse, so it wasn't like we were going to quote and then find more things wrong with her. So No, no, there was, so, there was, there was nothing left that was right with her. And there it was, a basket case on a trailer. The thing I remember right at the end was to, to paint her once she was fully repaired and restored. And when we worked through how long that would take and how much paint that it would need. Yeah, because of her shape she had so much exposed that we had to get a better finish on than you would normally do in the bilges of a boat. You know, it's not just a case of pile five coats of paint on, you had to pile five coats of paint on and make it look good. We built the shelter purpose built for terror yeah. and made it strong enough for it so that you could suspend it from the... Yeah, yeah, the, I mean the, the roof, roof structure was far stronger than just to hold keep out the rain because we actually hung the boat up from the roof, suspended it so that we could take the trailer out. We then made two long supports that ran right down the whole length of the boat and fitted the bottom of the boat to hold the boat in shape about either side of the keelson. Yeah, either side of the cent the keelson, the centre line, about three, four foot apart. And then we took the whole of the old backbone out of the boat and made a complete new one and then once we'd made it all we obviously had to Oops. slide it all back we in on rollers in on and jack it all up yeah. it weighed probably about half a ton solid the timber line structure. Yeah. Yeah, actually, all in one piece all made up and then jacked yeah. it jacked it up set it all up 
and then went into the next stage of replacing all the boat around it. I just remember that that day with the, the launch was us being all sat in the boat and with the tide on all four corners yep. rich, wasn't yep. she? And it was all rigged so that we could drop two two lines, then pull it back and then use that one to pull yep. it around. And then she was all set to and we up sails and but it was it was that time all that time which seemed to go on forever whilst we were sat there like pots of tea with everybody looking at us from the tall <laughs> gathering around the, the yes. and, uh, yeah. but it was, was a beautiful day it was and there was a nice breeze and um, yeah when the time came that all went very well didn't it the, yeah yeah and that was the first time you'd actually you'd, time you'd time been I, anywhere in it yes, let alone yeah. sailed it and, and yes it was a real yeah. privilege and honor to to s steer her that day and, and set off down the harbour with at a, at a brisk pace Yes, and the, yeah. the boat going beautifully, wasn't she? And it handled so well, yes. we were able to actually, because it, it almost sailed like a dinghy, we were able to sail back in. So it wasn't just we sailed off over the horizon, we were able to turn around, come back, and actually sail right in, back into the quay and go out again. So the public got to see the boat really close up. It got quite a, quite a good... Because um, I remember thinking yeah. when we got close to the quay again, I thought, oh, goodness me, don't don't miss stays. Please go about, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Who, who had their key on? The, who, who had the key to the engine? In case. Just in case we didn't need it. No, didn't need it. You just put the helm over and round she and goes. She went, yeah. She's a beaut to sail. There were four projects under the theme of monitoring and surveys, and these included GIS, that's Geographical Information Systems, whereby data is stored on tabs on a map on the computer. So you click on a location and then the data of that location would come up on the computer screen. And that was really new at the time. Uh, other projects included the development of a fish survey and that's recording uh, the number of species of fish. And another project was a subtidal survey. So divers explored the channel beds for us and recorded all the species that they observed there. So the fourth theme under the suite of 40 projects was access for all and for the most part this was finding areas of the shoreline paths in the harbour where we could upgrade the surface so that people who use wheelchairs for example could have access to the shoreline and enjoy the views. So in the years before the Heritage Lottery funding, we had already worked on some parts of the harbour shoreline footpaths to upgrade the surface for people who, for example, might uh, use wheelchairs. Um, but the lottery years, part of the funding was to improve the path surface, such as here at Princeton, uh, where the surface of the path uh, was extended as well. The fifth theme was about sustainable integrated transport and this suite of projects included uh, the Sultan's Way, the cycle path that runs between Chichester and uh, West Wittering and also a new pontoon alongside the quay at Del Quay and also uh, the minibus that is based uh, at our education centre also at Del Quay. We were able to buy our minibus but actually this didn't happen until the third year because for two years we had a bus service around the harbour but it was decided that it was such a long way to get a bus to go all around the harbour that it wasn't viable. So with the third year of that project, with that money, we were able to buy this minibus because since then it's had a lot of financial support from the Friends of Chichester Harbour. So the sixth and final theme was on education and interpretation and there were 11 projects, one of which was the creation of a new website for the Conservancy, its very first one. At the time I worked on a project called Junior Conservancy. As part of the national curriculum, uh, citizenship had been brought in and so we looked at how the harbour is managed as part of that and school groups would come down to the harbour and also go to County Hall and carry out a meeting just like the councillors do. And another of those projects was of course the purchase of this wonderful craft, this solar powered boat. 
So it's been 15 years since the three years of the projects funded by the Heritage Lottery. And the thing I've noticed is so many of the projects were about developing computer software. For example, um, one of the projects was to pay for the development of our very first website. Also another one to develop GIS, that's Geographic Information System, of course, these days, GIS and websites is just part of everyone's everyday life. With technological advances over the years, uh, everything used to be done originally, of course, on typewriter, typewriters and handwritten notes. But now we have a system called Harbour Assist, which manages every aspect of the harbour for us, from mooring rental, mooring lets, harbour dues, asset maintenance, all the records of our navigation marks, uh, vehicles, vessels, and all that sort of thing. Our environment team also use Harbour Assist to track the work that they do across the harbour. So um, the rangers will use it to monitor all the footpath maintenance, bird hides, bridges, and all the other infrastructure they have across the harbour. So one of the conditions of the lottery funding was that all the money needed to be spent within three years. So the first projects got underway in 2004, and the final ones were completed uh, in 2006. A summary was put together of all the work in this document here, Rhythms of the Tide, and then there was a very happy and celebratory two-day conference all about the work that we managed to uh, achieve, held here at the Langston Hotel on Hailing Island. So under the Act of Parliament uh, for the Conservancy in 1971, one of the requirements was for us to provide opportunities for learning. So next month is all about lifelong learning.